Greetings, friends. As you all know, last week we ended Season 12 of Heart to Heart with Anna with an excellent program about having an LVAD, or Left Ventricular Assist Device, as a bridge to transplant. It seems like after I finish a season, I always have people suggesting other shows I should have on that topic. Of course, that happened again, and I decided to let some awesome guest hosts do a few bonus shows for us. Today, we are definitely enjoying a global program. Jordan is joining us today from Canada, and Megan is hosting from Australia. These two adults who were born with congenital heart defects have a very interesting conversation about Jordan's experience. Enjoy today's episode, my friends. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna. I'm Megan Tones and the guest host of today's program. This is the first bonus episode of season 12 of Heart to Heart with Anna. Our theme this season is organ donation and transplantation. So I'm very excited for today's show to feature a seasoned traveler. He is here today to share his story with us about his heart journey and to help us better understand what he endured and why he needed a heart transplant. Today's show is entitled Surviving Plastic Bronchitis Thanks to a Heart Transplant. Jordan Marsha was born with transposition of the great arteries or TGA. He had multiple open heart surgeries attempting to repair the problems his heart had, but unfortunately, they were not successful. And to complicate matters more, he developed a rare lung problem known as plastic bronchitis. Having both heart and lung problems, it became apparent that Jordan had to have a new heart. Anything less, and he just wouldn't make it. Luckily for Jordan, he received his heart transplant and the plastic bronchitis disappeared making him the first known survivor of that potentially life-threatening illness, which is the reason he's on our program today. In addition to surviving plastic bronchitis, he has had to deal with cancer as well. He has a philosophy on life that he will share with us that is probably the key to how he cheated death over and over again. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, Jordan. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. Jordan, you've had an awful lot to deal with, especially in your early childhood. Can you tell us a little bit about surviving both plastic bronchitis and cancer? To be completely honest, it was a roller coaster. When mm. I was diagnosed with plastic bronchitis, there were no survivors of the disease. Wow. And pretty much a death sentence. So oh. at that time, my doctors didn't even know what to do or what to tell my parents. So they put a note out to uh, London and some of the doctors out there asking them what to do about this as they had the majority of the plastic bronchitis cases. When they received that note, they simply told our doctors to send an autopsy report. And my doctor said, said, uh, no, no, like he's still alive. So they just sent all uh, doctors from all around the world to come and check me out. Basically just pick my brain, ask me questions, figure out what it was like and what I was doing. But Mm. the reality of it was me just telling my mom and my doctors, I have a cast in my throat. And they would have to put me out, which happened every two to three hours, and do a bronchoscopy. Regarding the cancer, I was about 10 years old when that happened, and it was lymphonodic cancer. Mm. At, uh, that was a whirlwind as well. My parents didn't want me to miss any more school, and I had to get a central line, and I was at home doing treatments. Wow, because you were only very young when all of this happened, so five with the plastic bronchitis, is that right? It was it was three and a half with the plastic bronchitis and then 10 with the cancer. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. So you were still extremely young then. But I understand that your story still doesn't stop there. Seven years of good health. So can you tell us a little bit about cancer? Absolutely. So I did. I had seven amazing years before I contracted cancer. It was because of me being immunosuppressed. Uh, I mm. got it when I was 10 years old. I had to be taken out of school. They found out that it was cancer of the appendix. They removed my appendix, but it didn't stop. It, mm. uh, it stayed within my lymph nodes. And because of the immunosuppression, like I, I couldn't go on normal chemo, so I had to go on gancyclovir, which was like chemo's little brother. I had to be given a central line. Days, weeks of them trying to inject it into my veins and my arms and my hands, my veins just blew up. Mm. Uh, it couldn't handle the, the robust gancyclovir. They threw me onto a central line, flooded my system with gancyclovir to try to kill the 
the uh, the lymphoma, the the cancer. My mom got fed up with it because I had spent my entire life in the hospital prior. She demanded that I actually got to go to school inside the hospital. So I spent half of grade five in a hospital going to classes in the hospital so I can graduate. Then after that, she went and took courses so that I could actually get administered at home and I wouldn't receive any more school. It was just, it was a roller coaster of a ride to, to say the least. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's amazing what your mum did for you there and how you've managed to get through so much, you know, not giving up. Texas Heart Institute were offering us a mechanical heart and he said, no, Dad, I've had enough. Give it to someone who's worthy. My father promised me a golden dress to twirl in. He held my hand and asked me where I wanted to go. Whatever strife or conflict that we experienced in our long career together was always healed by humour. Heart to Heart with Michael, please join us every Thursday at noon Eastern as we talk with people from around the world who have experienced those most difficult moments. Anna Jaworski has written several books to empower the congenital heart defect or CHD community. These books can be found at Amazon.com or at her website, www.babyheartspress.com. Her bestseller is The Heart of a Mother, an anthology of stories written by women for women in the CHD community. Anna's other books, My Brother Needs an Operation, The Heart of a Father, and Hypoplastic Left Heart Syndrome, a handbook for parents, will help you understand that you are not alone. Visit babyheartspress.com to find out more. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Anna. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our show, please send an email to Anna Jaworski at Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. That's Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Anna. How did surviving these two very dangerous conditions affect your outlook on life? To be completely honest, at a young age, I sort of realized that I was going to die. Not in that moment, as I had far too much life to live, and I'm actually really stubborn. So I just decided that that wasn't going to happen. And I was just going to continue to live as much as I could, as long as I could, without fear. When you're exposed to that at a young age, uh, death, people around you not really making it, you can do two things. One, crawl up into a ball and suffer. Or two, understand that, you know, death is apparent, it's going to happen. And you should just live every moment to the fullest while you can. That's right. So that's really um, amazing. You know, I can remember being in hospital as a five-year-old when I had my first major operation. And I only remember little things, but for me, I can remember just being focused on getting out of there and getting back home and getting back into the, the things that I love. It's a lot to go through at a young age for sure. I've uh, seen a few of your videos um, and blogs, and on there you've said that you were thinking that you would make it to 40 years of age. Why 40? I say that a lot, and it's because the average age of a heart transplant recipient, on average, uh, 10 years post-transplant, and then after that, complications kick up real fast, Mm. and uh, it goes downhill quite quickly. I have somehow doubled it probably with my outlook on life that I have at 22 years now and the way that I look at things is if the average lifespan was 10 and I doubled it the chances of me living to 80 is almost unrealistic I kind of cut that in half and gave myself 40 which gives me 40 years to get out and do all the things that I want to do and that puts a like a fire behind me a pressure to really go and get after life. Oh, that's great. You know, I, I remember meeting an, an older man in the hospital one time and he'd had a transplant as a teenager. It's wonderful that uh, you, you've been able to do so much post-transplant and make 22 years. And, you know, I, I really hope you see an, another 22 to keep doing what you're doing. Home Tonight Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective. 
I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home tonight forever. Heart to Heart with Anna is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. Jordan, I understand that you were born with TGA, but you had a lot to deal with when you were young. So I understand when you were only three, you developed plastic bronchitis. Uh, So can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So when I developed plastic bronchitis at the time, there were no living survivors. When my, uh, when my doctors tried to figure out what it was or what was going on, because they had no idea, they contacted doctors in uh, London, which were the only, it was the only hospital that had dealt with it. They asked them what we could do. London said, send us the autopsy reports. And my doctor really? said, he's still alive. So that immediately started an entire thing. They started contacting doctors from all over the world, China, US, Canada, London, they came into Toronto Sick Kids just so they could look at me and ask me, you know, how are you feeling? What's going on? Try to figure out how I was managed, how I managed to live so long afterwards. Because the oldest living transplant recipient or the oldest living person at that time with plastic bronchitis, when they weren't even living, it was three weeks that they had went before they passed away. And then there was me who had managed to go six months. Wow. And so you're only three as well when all of this was happening. Yeah, I, I was wow. I was pretty much bedridden. My bronchoscopy team or the ENT team were doing bronchoscopies every three hours. Uh, so I was having to get put down by anesthetic, uh, the bronchoscopy, woken back up. And then by that time, I was pretty much getting put down again. I had ah. chest tubes as well, and I couldn't really speak, so... I would try to get the words out to my mom and say, hey, cast, there's a cast. But most of what I did was just take my hands and point to my throat. My mom knew to tell the ENT team. It got to a point, though, where they were coming too fast and they had actually given up. My entire ENT team had just said, no, we're not doing this anymore. He's not going to make it. So they walked away. My doctor, who was the head of emergency at the time, Dr. Peter Cox, he, he grabbed the bronchoscopy machine and said, I'm not giving up. And he stayed in the room with me, and he put me under every time, every three hours. He did the bronchoscopies. He just wouldn't let me go. Wow, that's that's amazing. And I understand that there's an even more amazing thing right around the corner with this story. Is that right? Yeah, there is a transplant heart. Uh, that's a story in itself. My doctors, because of the plastic bronchitis, had basically told my parents that you should probably say your goodbyes. I wasn't going to make it. They had taken me off the transplant list just because it wasn't going to happen. They had pretty much given up. My parents had spent days, weeks, months in the hospital at this time, and they were absolutely exhausted. And then they mm. received this news, which was tragic. My, my dad told my mom to go back to the Ronald McDonald house and just get some sleep. Uh, I was resting. My dad went into the parent room. He had actually, because we were there for so long, he created an entire little nook, a little bed for himself behind the couches so that no one was to see him, that he could go sleep for 5, 10, 25, 40 minutes at a time before he had had to come back into the room to check on me. I got really lucky. While this was all happening, after my doctors had said it's not going to happen, they'd taken me off the list. 
my parents were, they, they understood that they're waiting for me to die. There was an unfortunate accident and uh, a little boy got into a car accident and was brain dead. The mother of that child was upstairs in that parent room and there was a, a grandmother in there who was consoling her and told her that her niece was alive because there was a kidney transplant that was done just a week ago. And she's living right now because of that transplant. They had previously asked that that woman, you know, do you want to do this? And she said, absolutely not. But after having that conversation, she went back to the doctors, her husband, and they had said, yeah, okay, this is something we want to do. Just because of that grandmother who had that, that story, the doctors told my dad, who was there, who was like feet away from the entire conversation, look, we have a heart but we have to check to see if anyone can receive it before your son, because legally he's not on the list. And uh, my dad said, okay, yeah, check it. And he didn't want to call my mom because he didn't want to get her hopes up. Mm. So they checked the list and they found out that nobody needed that heart. So the doctors went back and told my dad, okay, look, nobody needs this heart. We can do this, but it's no guarantee. So he called my mom, my mom, rushed over from Ronald McDonald's house and uh, they sat, they sat together having a conversation with the doctors who said, there's no guarantee. You know, he's really weak. He's the only reason we're doing this is because this heart can't go to anybody. And my parents said, okay, yeah, we understand. Um, We understood there's no guarantees. We understood he was going to die. We understood that he wasn't going to make it. But my dad uh, and my mom knew that I never gave up. I fought through everything from the time that I was born up until I was about three and a half years old through plastic bronchitis, through through everything that I did. So they said, look, he's, he's not giving up. We're not giving up. Just do the mm. transplant. The transplant ended up being body to body. So it went from that young boy into me without that heart skipping a beat, which was an incredible surgery as it was. I, I don't even know how long it took. I, I I think it was 14 hours. Wow. And after the surgery, the the heart was so big that it stuck out of my chest. I was actually in a coma for about three weeks afterwards for my body to sort of heal around it. And when they finally woke me up, my doctor had asked me prior to the transplant. And, and he said, hey, what do you want to eat? What's the first thing you want when you wake up? And I said, I want a Big Mac. <laughs> so during the... During the waiting period, while I was waiting to wake up, nobody knew if I was going to wake up. Nobody knew if, how good my brain activity was going to be because I was out for a really long time. Mm. Nobody knew how things were, were going to happen. There were nurses from my ward that had known me since I was a kid. People flew in from British Columbia uh, to Toronto to see me, to see what was going to happen. I had nurses from emergency parents. My entire room was just littered with people asking the question, you know, is he going to wake up? And when I woke up, the first thing I said was, mom, where are you? She came Mm. around the corner and she hugged me. My dad was there. And then Peter walked up, my doctor, and his hands were behind his back. And he said, uh, hey, how are you feeling? I said, I'm good. Where's my Big Mac? And he pulled it out. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so um, Jordan, I I understand that you've got a um, a Facebook page or or a web page where you share some of your travel stories and make a few videos about your trips that you've been on. So, uh, would you like to share that with us? Absolutely. So, you just got a. It's on Facebook. It's a watch channel, sort of like a TV show, and it's called Jordan D Marcia, uh, Jordan with an A. And then M-A-R-C-I-A. Awesome. Well, anyone out there with CHD or who is a heart transplant recipient, make sure you check that page out if you want to go somewhere and, and see the world. So thanks so much, Jordan, for coming on the show today. It's been really inspirational for us to hear about how someone who had plastic bronchitis and cancer and received a heart transplant has been able to travel and do so much and live life to the fullest like you have. Thanks so much for having me on this, uh, on the show today. 
I know it's been been our pleasure. So that concludes this bonus episode of Heart to Heart with Anna. Thanks so much for listening today. So find you can find the show on YouTube. Just look up Anna's name. That's Anna Jaworski. That's J A W O R S K I. And subscribe. And remember, my friends, you are not alone. I want to thank Megan and Jordan for sharing their experiences with us in this special bonus episode today. Jordan and Megan will join us again next week when we discover even more about Jordan's goal to visit more countries than any other heart transplant survivor. Come back next week to enjoy another Heart to Heart with Anna episode featuring Megan Tones and Jordan Marcia. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you have been inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart defect community. Heart to Heart with Anna, with your host Anna Jaworski, can be heard every Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern Time.